G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me, and you know, sometimes you can do everything right to protect your bananas from animals and still end up losing out. Like what's happened here with this bunch. Covered, did all the right things, and the bat still ripped a hole through the top of the bag and ate all the bananas. But there is another way to not only protect the bunch of bananas, but also allow them to ripen practically on the stem itself so that the bananas are allowed to absorb the sugars and develop into the beautiful sweet fruit we love to eat. Let's get into it. Look, almost, could almost eat this, but I'm not going to because, you know, it's not even damaged, but there's a chance that there's animal, especially bat saliva over this thing. And if that gets into my system, who knows what diseases I could catch. Banana plants only produce one crop per plant. So they grow for like nine to 12 months or so before you get your bananas out of them. And you nurture the plants and you wait for the bananas to ripen, you bag them, you do all the right things. And I think it's a tragedy that you can wait for so long for a bunch of homegrown, beautiful, juicy and sweet bananas to ripen on the plant only for animals to come through and target them and eat them. It's enough to drive you bananas. Anyway, like I said, there is a way that you can fix that. And for now, it's past fixing for this bunch so I'm going to cut it down and the plant can now go into compost. At least it'll be useful for something. But you can see what they've done here. They've chewed through or ripped through the bag. These bags are fairly strong. Even the green ones are all eaten. Not all of our bunches get affected. It only seems to be the odd one that does, the odd bunch. So that is a good thing. And often I will put, because the bats will like to come from underneath, I will often put a mesh on the base of our banana bunches as added protection. But for the really ravenous or strong bats and possums, there's nothing much you can do about it. If they really want to get to the bananas, this type of plastic won't hold them back. So I'll be looking at other ways that I can protect them on the tree, because that still is the best way to get them at point of ripening. You don't have to wait till they're falling off the tree or anything or overripe, but it really is nice to allow bananas to ripen on the plant, at least till they're starting to change color. And that way you're gonna get a beautiful, sweet, sugary banana. But as an insurance policy, what I often do is select a bunch of bananas that are not ripe, but have turned upwards, are getting quite fat, but still aren't to the point of turning yellow yet. And I'll remove the bunch, but I won't remove the bunch from the top of the stem here. What I'll do is I will remove the whole plant almost, at least six or so feet down from the bunch of bananas so that you've got a whole long stem left on the end. And what that does is it allows those juices and sugars to keep going and sustain that bunch so that the bananas ripen slowly and they suck in those nutrients and sugars as it goes. And yes, the bananas will still ripen faster than usual, but they will be much better tasting than if you just took the bunch straight off the tree without any stem attached. What I do is I hang the bananas in our shed, stem and all. And here it is, hanging straight up like this 
on a slight angle with the stem pointed upwards and that allows the fluids to drain from the stem into the bunch as it ripens. Now this bunch is getting a little bit overripe now at the moment but it's been kept safe and not one banana has been eaten. Let's have a quick taste test. Look at that. Oh, I can smell it. These are a small lady finger banana. They've always been a smaller size banana. Mmm. Oh, wow. Well, sweeter than anything you get in the store, and they weren't ripened fully on the plant. They were ripened in my shed. Oh, wow. Mmm. That is as delicious as you'll ever get, and you wouldn't know. You can tell the difference, I know I can, when bananas are picked dead green and then left to ripen over time, just in the hand or whatever. They don't taste near as good. Um, sometimes they taste chalky and awful and I just can't eat them from the store, especially now that we have our own banana trees and we're getting regular bananas. Now I've got a lucky setup here in the shed. I've got a beam that goes across so that I can wedge the stem up between the beam and the corrugated iron roof. And that way it just sits there naturally without having to tie it up. But if you didn't have that, you could string the thing up, you could rope it up, you could use other ways to balance that banana stem up there and have it away from anything being able to A, get to it and also B, have it on that angle so that the fluids can drain down. Now this stem here is still green. I've had stems and I've forgotten about them for months in here well after we've eaten the bananas. And what's happened when I've come back and removed them, even though they've been in a hot shed sitting there for several weeks, they have still moisture inside them. They take a long time to dry out is what I'm saying. This is a very simple remedy to saving your bunch of bananas from getting eaten out there in the wild and still having them taste wonderful. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a big, fantastic banana finger thumb, thumbs up, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Share this video around because sharing helps my channel out heaps. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now. <sighs> yeah, well, some of these ones that are going a little bit overripe, well, we're going to be using them in smoothies, of course. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, so I'll use them in a smoothie. In fact, I might make one up right now. What a great idea. Homegrown, fresh, sweet bananas. Cheers. Time for these to go inside.